The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM Monday. We got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading. We pick up right where you left off Friday. You talk about an acceleration, man, putting things into a 15-minute chart. It was a one-way trip Friday. Amazing that it took until 10.15. The chairman's speech, eight minutes. I've been hearing all along, watching Bloomberg uh, over the weekend, this morning early. Eight-minute speech. He chose to be short and to the point. Uh, remarkable, though, that the market actually dropped about 30 to 40 points, got it all back for a bit, uh, and then everybody decided, yeah, he had a few words to say, and they were very important to the side of higher rates coming at you. And last night, we opened basically where we're at right now, and you've been chopping around. So futures, I was pretty interested to see where futures opened last night when you had the S&Ps down almost 3% on Friday. Uh, this morning, you're down about 8 tenths percent. NASDAQ was down almost 4%. You're down another percent this morning. Not many days you see a slide like that. I mean, there was no reprieve yes, uh, yesterday, Friday. No reprieve. You could say you got a consolidation between 11.15 in the morning and 1 p.m. Eastern time. And look how the day closed out on the NASDAQ, man. I mean, these are 15-minute bars, folks, and you only had three of them all day. And from 1 o'clock on, you didn't have a single green bar the whole day uh, in the final three hours of trading. The S&Ps managed to barely get a green bar over that time. Uh, but as you see, markets open negative. It's going to be an interesting open, to say the least. Bitcoin catching some headlines this morning, under 20,000. This blue line on Bitcoin I have here, that is where futures opened five years ago. You could say a critical area there. Bitcoin, now they've been down at these lows before. June, we had 18,500, somewhere in there. We're trading at 19,700, but always interesting when you're under the price level that futures began trading at almost five years ago for Bitcoin. Ethereum, 1458, trading lower as well this morning. Everything gapped low last night. Gold catching a little bit of a bid this morning from 1731 to 1748. You see that run there? Uh, they're talking about in the den. We're all going to become commodity traders, man. Just remarkable action across the board. There's natural gas dropping a bit. We had a 10 handle last week on natural gas. We want to talk some volatility, man. There's some volatility chopping around near the recent highs. 906 down 21 cents for natural gas this morning. And we check to the crew contract that was looking. Crude. Up a bit, 93.99. Last week we were at 95.76, and we jumped to notes and bonds as we got lower price and higher yield. The 10 year right now, 3.1%, about 3.097 to be exact. You were as low as 116.28. So this market recoiling a little bit. We had higher yields coming at you. We're at 117.07, but you've caught a bid to the tune of what? 10, 11 ticks off of the lows so far this morning on the 10 year. The 30 year is off almost a full point. It was off a full point at one point. 116.10, down 27 ticks for the 10 year, 30 year, excuse me, and you jump over to the VIX. And there's some action for you, man, on the VIX. Jumping back to a daily. Boy, you got that first leap about a week ago. And really, you bang out that week with quite a candle. We opened today at 27.09. And, you know, if you go back to the beginning of the year, we've only had one time where the VIX has spiked and we haven't hit the 30s. OK, and that was when we did get some type of spike in early April. They got the VIX up to about 25. But other than that, we've had three spikes of a market acceleration to a downturn and every time you've had the vix about eight to ten points higher than even if we're at right now just to show you kind of what is possible markets catching a little bit of a bid off the lows s p is down 29 off of being down negative 40 or more at one point uh but nonetheless that vix the friday action on the vix today we open a bit higher you compare it to the spikes we've had recently very possible that we're going higher than 27 folks we have about three full weeks until we're talking about a fed meeting 
Okay, so there's ample time for the market to get ahead of whatever they may think may be coming. Now, maybe you pull back in terms of the market action up until that Fed meeting. Maybe you pull back just until we get some economic data, which we're going to begin getting uh, as we come into September. We're coming into, of course, a long weekend next weekend. Markets close one week from today. We come back Tuesday, September 6th, and you are two weeks away from when that Fed meeting begins, September 20th. So... Where does the market head ahead of that? We're going to find out in about 20 minutes from right now when we get an open. Let's jump to some of the headlines we got this morning. Futures sink, treasuries fall on policy outlook. That's one way to put it, man. Uh, the other headline out there I was reading this morning, rally hopes crumble as Powell's rates reality hits full force. Now, you could say that the market had no reason to be surprised, right? That what the chairman said was pretty reasonable stuff that – they're not going to pause just yet. You know, the idea that they're going to begin cutting, it's all going to be data dependent. And what you have to remember is that the last CPI print that we were dealing with is 8.5%. You add up those two, you add up the fact that we have a jobs number that's adding, what, 500,000 month uh, jobs for the month of July, inflation at 8.5%. You better believe that they're probably going to have their foot on the pedal for some foreseeable time to say the least. So we jump from there. Uh, let's just jump into some of the headlines this morning and we'll kick it off. Unfortunately, no launch this morning. So the Artemis One rocket launch uh, suspended. There was a story out there from the AP early this morning that they had cracks potentially. Uh, now, no humans, no people on this actual rocket, okay? It's not landing on the actual moon itself as well. But still, you wanna be safe. And man, I was reading about this thing, right? So. Check out the amount of cash that this thing is burning. And I am all about spending money on science, folks. When you, especially, let's put it this way, we should be able to understand this, all of us anyway, but especially when you have a child and you start running the numbers of, you know, I am 42 right now. Uh, my son is one. My son is going to be about 30 years old in the year 2050. He's going to be my age in the year 2063. Right, 2063, you want to believe in science, folks, because uh, the leaps ahead that we can make during that time, pretty amazing to think what it comes with. So this one, though, boy, you talk about some delays, man. Now, in 2012, they estimated it was going to cost $6 billion to develop, debut in 2017, and carry a $500 million per launch price tag. It's only now debuting. It costs more than $20 billion. NASA's inspector general its internal auditor earlier this year said that Artemis is not the sustainable moon program that the agency's officials say it is. They found more than $40 billion has already been spent on the programs and projected NASA would spend $93 billion on the effort through 2025. I can't stand when people don't want to spend money on science, folks. There's nothing wrong with privatizing some of that. SpaceX is doing a great job. There's nothing also with spending some of the money that we have on a NASA program and scientists, okay? But you can still hold them accountable, man, because that's bonkers. As we know, sometimes in government, man, the big dig in Boston, right? We saw it firsthand in Boston, man. You want to know how to spend some cash. $40 billion already, $93 billion to 2025. But here's the kicker of it all. Even... That 2025 date's now in question as the NASA's inspector general said the development technologies needed to land on the moon's surface are unlikely to be ready before 2026 at the earliest. Unfortunate to say the least, but this morning that gets scrapped and probably the right thing for safety. Think of the pressure on the people running that thing with all of the delays, right, to launch anyway. But thankfully, you got us air with the side of safety. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back. We'll be talking some markets and what we have coming up this week. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in negative territory. I'm going to jump to the dollar real quick. You can talk about some moves, man, in currencies. Dollar index pushes 109 today. We give back almost a full point. Look at the action on a 15 minute basis, man. Now, you look at the action on Friday, okay, from 107.58, almost two full points to where we were last night, 109.47. You give up almost a full point. Look at the action of the euro US dollar. Not normally the type of action you get in currencies, folks. Euro on Friday, okay, early, early, we're trading at 99.5. You make it up to one over parity, okay? And then what do you do? You trade from that point all the way down to 99. And then this morning, from about one in the morning, we were at almost 99. You just got above parity again. That's a full penny, which is just a mammoth, mammoth move in the Forex market. I mean, you're getting pretty large moves in the tenure comparatively to the moves that you normally see. I mean, you're talking about a full point lower from where we were chopping around on Friday. Since the lows overnight, you're up about 10, 12 ticks. Uh, currencies impacting, of course, markets, impacting commodities. Uh, you could make the case, folks, that the gold contract has held up pretty well when priced in dollars, considering the strength. Now, part of this pop here is the retracement of all that we just talked about there. OK, you've had some recoiling action. Gold was as low as 1731. We're at 1750 right now. If you ever do get dollar weakening, and I'm not saying you're getting it because I'm probably not placing that wager right now, man, not on Monday morning with 10 minutes to go in the open following Friday's action where the chairman came out and said, I'm going to be as short as I can and make sure they don't have too many words to read through what I'm trying to tell them, which is inflation's out of control. They have two mandates, right? Full employment and price stability. Remember this, folks. The Fed has two mandates. If you remember this, it's pretty simple considering what the data is showing right now. They have two mandates, okay? They don't have three that includes a stock market reaching all-time highs. They have full employment 
which of course is in some way tied to the market and it tied to the economy, but tough to make the case that we are not probably past full employment for a healthy economy. Part of the reason that inflation is raging, you could say, is that we are past full employment or a healthy full employment. Nonetheless, full employment and what? Price stability. We have 8.5% inflation. We're gaining 500,000 jobs a month. Okay, and we got unemployment at 3.6%. You got to read the writing on the wall, man. And the data backs up that they do not need to pause right now when you're adding. I mean, we're adding 500,000 jobs a month, folks. Okay, if that data starts to shift, yes, you could see a dramatic shift. The chairman is probably rightfully so, betting that they have some room to go before they really have an impact on that inflation number. We're supposed to be at 2%, folks. Yeah, we might get down to 4 or 3 but we're supposed to get to 2 It's going to take us a little time, and the Fed seems like they're trying to tell the market that they're going to be vigilant, and uh, we'll see where the markets pick up this morning, whether we pick up with negative action. We're down 30 points right now on the S&Ps, jumping back to some of the futures. In those commodities uh, and jumping to that 10 year. And let's just jump to the 30 year real quick because it is interesting when you take a look at the 30 year, you go back as far as you can, right? Could be an ominous sign for lower prices and higher yield potentially. Maybe people flock into uh, the little safety of risk off because, boy, you break through that channel line, right? And an ode to our man, Bud Ross, the channel master, okay? And whether it's support, whether it's channel, uh, I love the idea because it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, let's we'll go, go back out a five-year weekly to see that bar. And what do we do, folks? All we did is we came back and we tested that bar and traded lower. Well, Bud would always say, man, you break through that line, right? That's not where you sell it. You wait for confirmation. What's the confirmation? The confirmation is you come back up, you test that line, then you trade lower. I mean, this is a monthly going back as far as I can see to 1999 that's a 23-year trend and look how many times it perfectly touches this now yeah we missed it a couple times but pretty close in january of 2014 and in november of 2018 okay but even if you take that line and you say to yourself maybe it should be a little bit higher for linear regression maybe we push it up to here or so right whatever it is pretty close to a pretty decisive action of coming back testing that line if that's the case man Boy, you talk about a rejection of that line. doesn't get much cleaner than that rejection that we just saw on August 1st, touching that. You got five straight days of negative action on the 30 year. We just traded from 145 to 136 since we touched that line. Nine points just like that. The moves are pretty amazing. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks and see how we're opening Monday. Probably going to be negative action across the board. Apple, they're going to get back about two bucks, man. There's a weekly. Let's put it back on a daily. Talk about a day, man. Apple, they got 16 billion shares traded. And on Friday's action, we'll put it to a 15-minute. They traded from 171. Today, you're at 161. Apple alone just gave up $160 billion in market capitalization. That's just amazing. There's not many companies out there worth more than $160 billion, and Apple gave it up just from where you were Friday morning. Microsoft, they're down another 3 bucks this morning to 265 We jump over to Google shares, sitting at about 110 from 111 We jump to Tesla. Pretty interesting that the market's getting a little bit of a lift right now. Only negative 27 kind of pushing where you were pre-market, almost session highs for the pre-market because you opened right at this level right now we did make it to a high of about 40 40 at about three in the morning but that even that couple tails above that price we're trading right now at 40 31 we jump over to amazon shares continuing to check it out amazon down about a dollar today reading about amazon and you know i made this remark on friday and i do have amazon in retirement folks i mean everybody really does i encourage you to uh, in the in the long term i just don't see how this company is not able to beat the multiples when they are just basically in everything. Now, the story that got me going here is, where are we? Oh, don't do it to me now. Here we are. Yeah, so they just shut down their Amazon Care, which was an internal program providing health and telehealth to their own employees. They just shut that down, but they acquired one medical earlier in the summer, okay? Now, this story here, is about their one medical purchase, July of 2022, this year. Okay, so they acquire one medical. And at that time, they 
people in the industry, analysts, whatever it is, okay, uh, said one of them's got to give because they're basically doing the same thing. One life, uh, one medical, excuse me, is uh, a niche player, almost like how they bought Whole Foods. So not exactly going to take over the entire industry immediately with that deal. But nonetheless, they, as they put it, the Whole Foods of primary care. OK, uh, one medical clinics could eventually augment Amazon's virtual offerings by stitching together online consultations with in-person tests and treatments when needed. That's where it's going, man. There is so much potential here. Now, it's interesting because they bought PillPack a while back and they folded PillPack into their own Amazon pharmacy. But this time they do it the other way around. Uh, so. One medical, now the, the kicker of this all, okay, they've never turned a profit. They have more than 8,500 business clients and 767,000 patients, okay? So not even a million patients in the, in the span of, you know, American healthcare. But nonetheless, it's an entry to them. And what's remarkable about this is some of the pullbacks we've had and some of the value that has been lost in these companies when you think about what they paid. Now, $3.49 billion is the purchase of one medical, okay? And that relates to about $18 a share. We're gonna finish this up when we get back, but one medical as last year traded as high as $59.82. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So much for the drift to positive uh, coming into the opening bell. Markets kind of spike a little bit on the open to negative prices, putting things on a five-minute chart to get a closer look at it. There's your open sitting right now at 4,023, pretty much where we're chopping around. You look at this consolidation area overnight, about a low of 4,015 to the upper boundary, about 4,030, and we're square right in the middle of that. The s and is down 34 points right now. Jumping around to other headlines out there, we talked about yields. How about the two-year the highest level since 2007. Not bad if you want to get a little two-year yield. Uh, highest level since November of 2007. You got the two-year in black there. You're pushing what? Just over 3%, I think that number is. Do they even tell us in here? I'm sure I can pull it up. Maybe somebody in the den if they have. Here we go. 3.48%. Uh, not bad. 3.5% on a two-year, man. Not bad right now. You think about market volatility uh, and where you go, you can get 3.5%. You put it in there for two years. What's that? 7% that you're getting on the market? That's still trading above 4,000 right now. Uh, 4,027. Keeping in mind that we were just trading at 3,600 about three months ago. That's a solid 10% below where we're trading at right now. We are right at the 382 of the bounce right now in the S&Ps. That level, about 4,015, and that is from the low. Oh, that, no, that is not the low to the high. Let's extend that. Let's activate that. Let's put that up to the top. Yeah, so we've blown through the 382 now. The 50% just under 4,000 and 3,900, man. If I was looking to wait uh, even... And, you know, longer term, I'm, I'm not loading up the boat at all. But that's an area that I could much easier see a bounce. Potentially, if this market trades lower, I'd be much happier. Getting into an area of 3,900, maybe you set your stop somewhere below that because you break below 3,900. I would say you're at least trading, uh, you know, another 100 points. And then you go another 100 below that to 3,700 as they go with the S&Ps down about 30 points. But, yeah, two-year, 3.5%, not bad. Finishing up that Amazon conversation real quick. So one medical one Life, which they own, One Medical. There's the stock there. So it comes out, Amazon's buying them about 18 bucks a share, three point something billion dollars. But pretty remarkable, man, when you look at some of these companies. 59.82, Amazon gets them a year later for 18 bucks, right? Three billion and change, basically nothing to a company like that if they can transform it. Now, that article that I was reading talked about that they're also going to have to signify health now. So they're gonna be more in the buy than build mode for healthcare, and probably not surprising, maybe considering how it went with Amazon Care at Home in terms of the one that they were doing for their own employees. Now, this is the article from when they purchased them, okay, 3.49 billion, but you can see the reach that that company would have, that company, Amazon, and you see the ability for them to purchase a company <coughs> excuse me, that's servicing almost a million Americans for 18 bucks a share when it was just trading there at the beginning of the year and was all the way up at 59.82 last year. And that is where the future of healthcare is going, folks. There is no reason that you need to be in a physical doctor's office for a lot of what you do. Yes, sometimes you're going to have to show up, whether it's getting blood work, right? Whether it's getting uh, just a doctor needs to physically, actually physically examine you in some way. But many times that's not the case. And many times, now that I have young kids in the house, you walk into a doctor's office and it's just germs everywhere, man. I, I dread being in there because it's the quickest way to get sick. Same thing with a hospital, man. Get out of a hospital the moment you can, folks, because everybody's very sick in there. And it's a very easy way to catch something, especially in a doctor's office for pediatrics. Now, the one we go to is pretty cool. They have one room for the kids that are sick, right? One room for the kids that are well. You're supposed to, that way you show up there. The kids aren't running around there to the sick, sick ones. At least they have their own area. It's got, you know, uh, its own chairs, whatever it be. But still, you get the point, right? Many times you can go in there for some type of a checkup. Or maybe it's just something where you have the sniffles and you can tell the doctor that, yeah, I took the kid's temperature. It's 100.5. He's, uh, you know, not sleeping very well. He, you know, there's just a million reasons of how that's going to change the world as we do everything online. So, yeah. And like you said, Amazon already knows everything about you, man. The amount of prime numbers they got. Uh, and it, we'll, we'll finish it up on the whole Amazon case, man, because I was reading about this weekend. And I'm pulling up the article right now. Lord of the Rings, okay, is coming to Amazon, I think September 2nd. And it's going to be 
like $715 million is what they spent already. They had to pay $250 million for the rights. It's going to be an eight season, I think five seasons, eight seasons. Nonetheless, they're spending $700 million, almost a billion dollars on one series of a show, of one season of a show, okay? And that's going to kick off September 2nd for Amazon. And that's what every Prime member gets on their period. Just very difficult to imagine that company, man, not blowing away many industries. And as I say it, they're positive today somehow, man. And they catch a little bit of a bid. Somebody's listening. Who's buying Amazon out there on the open from 129.50 to 131? It is remarkable when you think about it, folks, when you have that type of a reach in Amazon. And listen, I'm a Sam's member, right? I, I shop at Walmart. I love Target. But they are just leaps behind competing with Amazon when it comes to process. And process is the future in terms of being able to logistically deliver expectations for people. You don't think they understand how that's you know, something that healthcare will be ever important to. They understand process better than anybody. They have the cloud infrastructure to facilitate something like that better than anybody. And we'll see if it plays out. Let's jump around to some of these other thing stocks. We catch a bid for the first six and a half minutes of the trading day. Apple down about eight tenths percent. That's going to weigh on the market, man. Microsoft down about three tenths percent. Google shares positive a bit, up by about four tenths. Let's see how Meta's doing this morning. Up by about four tenths percent from Meta shares. Let's see how Arc. The ultimate growth stock. They catch a little bit of a bid. Let's see how some of those are. Look at Zoom catching a bid off the pretty disastrous lows for Zoom. Up 1.5% today. I wouldn't be touching Zoom just yet, though, folks. Roku, similar deal. Really dicey territory for Roku. Now, I've been saying it before, man. Roku. Maybe Amazon buys Roku at some point. I don't think so. Okay, but maybe somebody buys Roku. Maybe Netflix buys Roku. Uh, and maybe they don't. But there's a possibility that happens, folks, because Roku right now is under $10 billion. And I think they're in 66 million U.S. households as the set-top box, along with being in many TVs, as the gatekeeper for streaming and these companies. I mean, I just told you, Amazon, Amazon's going to spend a billion dollars on, on one series of Lord of the Rings, okay? Something to keep in mind as Roku hits levels that are, I mean, you came into COVID at double the price that you're at right now. You're telling me that the world has changed that dramatically? I mean, they faltered in many ways. Their plan, obviously, some issues, but nonetheless. And the other one that I always think about as well is DraftKings. Now, they've caught a recent bid with some of their recent earnings, but still, twice last year you were above 60 bucks. This year, again, you're down about half a percent. You're sitting at a market cap right now, $7.3 billion for DraftKings. The other one in gambling, Penn. They own Barstool Sports, sitting at about 32. They also own some tracks, and Penn sitting at about $5 billion. Something to think about, man. Roku, especially, you know, they're in some doldrums here, but I imagine Reed Hastings has taken a hard look at this equity under $10 billion when you were trading at $490 twice last year, and even the beginning of this year, you were at 240 Speaking of, we jump over to Netflix right now, NFLX, and they're up a bit with some of the growth stocks. NASDAQ 100, negative by 53. You get the Dow off three quarters percent, actually leading the way right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the gold contract right now up one dollar. This is a longer term chart, folks. This goes back to the 70s of gold at 100 bucks. Gold charges higher. Tell you, folks, if you're getting into the gold market, check out the front page of TFNN right now. We got a special right on the front page of TFNN. You can save 50 percent on the gold report off your first month. Because, man, credit to my dad. When he started the gold report, folks, I think it was 227 bucks. It's somewhere around this uh, right here on this chart, which is just a, a mind-boggling bottom and the run that has ensued. Quite a pullback from the years of 2011 to the lows of 2016. We're chopping around near those highs right now at 1751. That high, 1826, September of 2011, that high that it ran up to before you got a pullback. I think he got his subscribers out around 16 or 1700 bucks, man, after starting that thing at 200. And boy, some of those equities, okay, the miners, you think gold ran when it went from 200? to, to 1800 you imagine running a business and how profitable that business becomes when it goes from 200 to higher now the reason why i have this up is because i had mentioned gold's behaving pretty well considering for the strength of the dollar over this time now steve rhodes our man talks about it all the time talking about gold priced in other currencies right just taking a look okay i'm going to pull this up real quick at the yen, for instance, just remarkable when you see the type of moves, right? I mean, if you're in Japan and you're holding the yen, okay, now I just put it up on this chart in terms of we are back to basically where this was in 2011, right? Gold charges higher to 1750. We're sitting right now at 1750. We were, we're where we are in 2011. In the yen, you're more than double where you were, man. 2011, okay, from 2005. Gold goes from 43,000 up to, what, 135,000, 100,000. There's April 2011. There's August of 2011. And we're sitting at 240,000 right now, man. And just look, since 2018, okay, gold priced in yens almost doubling during that time. Now, the point being is, if you're trading gold, you better be keeping track of currencies, man, because you see the type of impact a dollar strength is going to have on gold. Now, it's... It's much more important than just the yen, but the yen's an important one for a big way as that happens, okay? Because just September of 2018, you have gold in yens going from 133, 133,000 to 240, okay? And September 2018, yeah, we're still up 50% over that time. I mean, you can't deny the moves that we've had, okay? But checking out the yen over that time, Right. Look at and this is the reason why. OK, from 2011, you have such a divergence because over that time, man, you have had the yen go from 77 
to 138, right? Basically cut in half the buying power because that is dollar strength. That is yen weakness, okay? It used to cost you 77 yen for a dollar. That's probably a much bigger number, right? Uh, and now it's 138. So if you haven't checked out, this is another plug. Why not? Because it all applies right now, folks, especially in this environment with so much going on. You look at this move in the yen, man. From the beginning of 2020, the yen just went from 102 to 138. We were sitting at, and it's not parity because it's not one for one. It's like 100 for one. But we were almost at that parity line of 100, you could call it. And just like that, man, the yen versus the dollar loses almost 40% of that buying power that you had. Pretty dramatic moves. All right, jumping back to the market real quick. S&P is holding up pretty well right now. We closed the gap. You closed yesterday, I mean, uh, yesterday, Friday, excuse me. And look how the futures even trailed off towards 415, man. 445, excuse me. Futures didn't stop even after the market closed. We hit about 4,042 for the low, and the market just got above that. We just actually closed that gap, man. You got a size 4,043, and I got a low print at the close of 4,042. You actually closed out the session at 4,042.75. Yeah, 4,042.75, where you closed out the 5 p.m. session, okay? Where you actually closed out at 4 p.m. Eastern time, you were talking about 4,059, which is why the market's still lower, about 20 points or so uh, there. Crew contract catches a little bit at 95.24 right now. Let's see where we are with the euro U.S. dollar. This morning, as we got some big action in currencies, we're back above the parity line at 100. Yeah, we were as low as 99, man. This is part of the reason you're seeing so much action in gold in a big way. We've seen action in the dollar yen as well. Crude contract up $2, pushing the highs that we had last week, 95.19 for crude. There's that gold contract at 17.51, and we check in on notes and bonds, sitting at about 117.04 for the 10-year. 10-year at about 3.1%, the two-year at 3.5%. There's some numbers for you. All right, let's jump into some of the earnings we got this week. So we'll jump into... Tuesday, we get some numbers. Best Buy, I believe, out with their numbers on Tuesday. Let's jump over to their chart. BBY, not to be confused with Bed Bath & Beyond. BBBY, it's actually later in the week. They're going to have a presentation in some degree. Putting this on a little bit of a longer term chart. Quite a pullback from 141 cut in half to about $74. You're back well below where we were pre-COVID levels of about 90 bucks. You came in to 2020. We jump over to the Analyze tab and the Earnings tab. And yes, they are out with their numbers tomorrow and you're looking at about a $6 move for a $74 equity for Best Buy. What else do we got? We got Chewy out with their numbers as well. C-H-W-Y, the pet food provider. They're out with their numbers tomorrow. There's some volatility for you, man. $37 stock. You got a $5 move priced in. This thing's been on quite a pullback from 120. Now, you did get quite a bounce here. I remember looking at this thing. And, you know, you don't even need to draw that trend line to realize that, boy, we're bumping up against some dicey levels in terms of if that's a downtrend channel, man, you just touch that level. And, you know, where exactly does that fall? Okay. Maybe you could line it up with the recent trend we've had here. Maybe it's a little bit of linear aggression matching the lows we had all the way back to March of 2021. Nonetheless, you see, man, we just touched that upper boundary line about 50 bucks. We're at 37. And they have almost a 15% move priced into their numbers after the bell tomorrow for Chewy. CrowdStrike, another one. They're out with their numbers. About a $16.50 move, CrowdStrike coming into those numbers. We got a bunch of Fibonacci numbers up here. Let's see. Let's take off some of these numbers for some clarity here. Well, this one's interesting. I'll leave this one on. You see the pullback we just had from April to the lows of May 9th? You bounce. Where do you bounce to? You bounce right to the 618 right now. Now, you're positive today on the session by about two tenths percent. CrowdStrike, about a $16.50 move into their numbers, and that'll be Tuesday as well, tomorrow. Wednesday, jumping down some of this, we got Express. Uh, we got Chico's. You get some retail out there. We got Barnes & Noble. Uh, we got Five Below. They'll be out with their numbers. Let's check out Five Below, some of those cheaper retailers. They've been in trouble lately, man. From 237 down to 120, we look at the full pullback this thing had from 47 bucks up to 237. You could say it built a little bit of a base at the 618, man. We come into their numbers. Now, Wednesday, and you're talking about a $9 move for five below $126 stock coming into their numbers. And fast forwarding further in the week, 
What do we get? Bed Bath & Beyond, they're going to provide a business and strategic update to investors during a conference call on Wednesday at 8.15 a.m. Eastern Time. Press release and re related materials to be issued approximately 8, uh, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So Wednesday, the meme stocks, they might get some lighter fuel as if they need it. There's some action at about 11. Yeah, not with their numbers, right, but they just have an event planned for Bed Bath & Beyond Wednesday, 8.15, info to come at 7.30. Stay tuned, folks. We'll go over some of the other equities with their numbers Thursday, Friday this week. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they're expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well. So it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have 25 minutes of trading so far with markets open and uh, futures holding up pretty well. We get the S&Ps down about 20 points right now at 4,038, almost up near the session highs so far this morning. Jumping around to some of the other companies to keep your eye on this week with numbers. Broadcom, AVGO, they, you talk about a pullback, man. They trade down $30 on Friday this morning. We're basically flat. We jump over. They're out with their numbers September 1st, which is Thursday, I believe, right? Yes, Thursday. They'll be out with their numbers after the bell. Broadcom, you talk about 5% move about priced into that equity. $23, just under a 5% move. We also get Lululemon out Thursday after the bell as well. There's some more volatility, about a $22 move priced in for a $310 stock for Lulu right now. Lulu down about six tenths percent. 
You trade down about $12 from where you were on Friday. You take a look at this thing. From the entire COVID run of 128 to 485, chopping around right around that 50%. You did make it as low as the 618. You see that 50% line many times, kind of that 300 area. Nice round number being an area of support. And right now you're coming into their numbers Thursday after the bell as well. We jump to some of the currencies. Crude checking in as we almost come to the end of the program, catching a little bit of a bid, man. I came on the air. Well, not there. I was checking out crude early this morning. Of course, 93 handle. I did come on the air and crude was under $94, right? Where were we? Yeah, we were chopping around about 94 bucks, man. You give it an hour crude, up a buck 50 just while I've been doing the show and you're inching towards the highs of last week, 95.76. We take a look at crude. And folks, I was talking to our man Teddy Kegstat last week about this on our chat every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. And, you know, he sees some higher crude prices coming at you. And one of the things I say is, man, this pullback has been so dramatic. Even if you get a healthy bounce and you think crude is probably going somewhat lower or consolidating, a 382 brings you to 100 bucks. A 618 brings you to 109. Somewhere in that area seems highly reasonable that crude makes a path to. All right, folks, talk about an interesting market. We got action in both directions. S&P is negative by 15. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He is up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Steve Rhodes. At 11 o'clock, Fast Market at 12, Larry Pesavento live at 1, Dave White live at 2, and, uh, and we got Larry filling in. That's right. One more day at 3 o'clock. You're getting double-duty Larry today as well. We got a treat. Stay tuned, folks. Live programming all day. Have a great Monday.